first thing I would like to do is to advertise a, a book. Okay, what happened? Okay, I'd like to advertise a book written by the previous speaker, Winston, and uh, Bill Dembski and me. It's coming out. It's published by the same people that, are publi that published uh, Biological Information, uh, New Perspectives, the Cornell Proceedings. So they seem to be pretty friendly to, uh, to what we're doing. So this is going to come out probably in a, uh, in a month or so. It deals with a lot of things, the mathematics, uh, the necessity of uh, information and the creation process. It also debunks uh, Avita, which was central in the Dover trial, where they talked about software implementing, um, implementing evolution. Uh, it's totally debunked in here and uh, a number of other interesting things. I, th there's actually a lot of math in here, number one, but number two, we've written it, motivated by Michael Behe, that uh, with, with marked edges, or with marked sections where you can skip over if you're not into the math. So we've made it accessible. Hard copy and PDF? Yes, it'll be both hard copy. I would also mention that we talked a lot about uh, publication. I recently became the editor-in-chief of Biocomplexity, which is the online journal wherein we publish things that are friendly to ID. We, we specifically do not include things of philosophy, content of philosophy, nor of religion, but if you have some solid sort of uh, information that you would like to uh, publish, please submit it. It will be peer-reviewed. We have actually rejected more papers than we have accepted, so it will be rigorously peer-reviewed. Here, here is my uh, content. This is kind of the bullets. Computers can only evaluate algorithms. It turns out that anytime you have a recipe to do something, a computer can do it. I mean, this is basically what Turing showed. If you give me a recipe, an algorithm, a procedure to do something, a computer can do it. The question is, is does there exist non-algorithmic things which are observable? And the answer is yes. In fact, Turing showed uh, there are things that are non-algorithmic. You cannot write a program to address Turing's halting problem. You can't write a program, in other words, that will analyze another arbitrary program and say whether that program will ever, ever stop or not stop. Uh, you can't find shortest programs. If you want a specific sort of output, there's no algorithm that allows you to find the shortest program that generates that output. Uh, and the other thing, which is a very hot topic in algorithmic information theory now, is creativity. That the computer itself cannot be creative. Despite all of the things you've heard about deep learning, convolutional neural networks, uh, the computer figuring out how to play Go, uh, play Jeopardy, the computer itself cannot be creative. It can only do what people tell it to do. Uh, I won't go into the details, but it started with Kurt Gödel in his classic uh, 1930s paper, which nobody understood except <laughs> mathematicians. Uh, Alan Turing came along and actually showed a manifestation of Gödel's uh, theory with his work in computer science. And then this was developed in uh, Komogorov, uh, Chait and Solomonov theory and those are the three guys, uh, KCS, and then it's developed into uh, Winston and Bob. <laughs> By the way, this is, this is Winston Ewart, the previous speaker, that's me, and that's Gregory Chaitin, who is still alive and did these things when he was a teenager, high school student in the Bronx. He actually independently created some of these ideas that we're using today. So. Here is the basic idea. This is the only math I'm going to show you, and I'm not going to go into detail for it. There is now a bit built on some of the some of the work of Bill Dembski and also Kurt Durston. Where's Kurt? Okay, Kurt uh, in his functional information, a technique to analyze objects as they exist and say whether or not they're designed, and actually measure the degree to which this object is designed. It's called algorithmic specified complexity. There is the equation. Um, Winston has actually shown that algorithmic specified complexity is very rare. It can be measured in bits and the probability that the algorithmic specified complexity is greater than alpha is less than 2 to the minus a. Therefore, if you have an algorithmic specified complexity of 10 bits, that means the chance of it being, uh, uh, the probability of that existing is less than uh, 2 to the minus 10, which is what, 1 in 1,000 roughly. The other thing which we can show specifically is the universe and multiverse are not sufficiently large 
enough to allow the probabilistic resources for the creation of anything, even with moderate uh, algorithmic specified complexity. And uh, not even the multiverse, the multiverse being defined as what string theorists uh, say is the upper bound on parallel universes, which is two to the 1,000th parallel universes. Even that is not uh, sufficiently large. We can elaborate on that if uh, we're asked. What is non-algorithmic? And this is, this is the um, creativity is non-algorithmic. This was Friedrich Gauss. Everybody has heard of Gaussian eliminate. He has a hundred things named after him. Gaussian, <laughs> Gaussian probability curves, uh, Gauss's law and Maxwell's equations. Uh, anyway, th this is a, a flash of inspiration, which we see in creativity that is not available in the computer. Gauss said, finally, two days ago, I succeeded not on account of my hard efforts, but the grace of the Lord. Wow. Um, like a sudden flash of lightning, the riddle was solved. I was unable to say what the conducting thread that connected uh, what I was previously <laughs> knew, which made my success possible. So there are these just bolts of creativity. Many of the people in this room, I'm sure you're very bright, you've had these instances, right? These ideas have come to you, you don't know where they came from, it wasn't from a computer. The mind, I think, is becoming inarguably such that it cannot be a computer. Uh, the person that, that popularized this is Roger Penrose, who worked with Stephen Hawking on some of the early work on black holes. And Penrose has actually written a couple of books dedicated to showing that the mind is not a Turing machine, that the mind is not a computer, that therefore it is non-algorithmic. There is something going on there. Now, Penrose is an agnostic. He thinks there's a naturalistic solution. He believes it has something to do with quantum tubules. And, well, I guess we'll find out. But uh, computers, according to Penrose, do not have the ability to create things. And he appeals back to the work of Gödel and... Uh, Turing and some of the other places. It also occurs in the arts. Let me see if this works. Ah, it does. Let me make sure it's... Okay, you're gonna have to be quiet. This is Paul McCartney of the Beatles explaining how he wrote the song yesterday. And notice the similarity between what he is, say, what he is saying and what uh, Friedrich Grouse said. And I just woke up one morning with this tune in my head. Um, I thought, I don't know this tune, or do I? It's like an old jazz tune or something, and I, because my dad used to know a lot of old jazz stuff. Well, maybe I've just remembered it or somewhere. So, I sort of got, went to the piano, found the chords to it, you know, it was like in G, F sharp minor, seven, sort of B and that. And um, I kind of re just remembered it, made sure I remembered it. And then I just hawked it around to all my friends and stuff and said, what's this, you know, it's gotta be something. It's like a good little tune, you know, and I couldn't have written it because I just dreamed it, you know. You don't get that lucky. Now here's another one. Some of you might remember Hoagie Carmichael. He wrote the classic song, Stardust. This is a documentary made about Hoagie Carmichael. It's very short, but the person that makes it is Bob Dylan, uh, the, who I'm a big fan of. I think he, he's, a, he's a great poet. But he talked about Hoagie Carmichael and this creative process. And then I want you to notice at the end, Bob Dylan says, Yes, I understand that this idea that it, uh, peace. Uh, I understand that this uh, idea is uh, something that uh, didn't come from my brain. And then it happened, that queer sensation that this melody was bigger than me. Maybe I hadn't written it at all. The recollection of how, when, and where it all happened became vague as the lingering strains hung in the rafters in the studio. I wanted to shout back at it. Maybe I didn't write you, but I found you. Hoagie Carmichael on Stardust. I know just what he meant. So therefore, there is this flash of genius. It occurs in business. For a while, the US Patent Office required all patents have associated with the flash of genius. There's a movie by that name, uh, if you're interested in it. It's about a guy that had a flash of genius, uh, uh, obviously. Uh, Eric Holloway, which uh, some of you know, is, is working with me now, and he's attempting to actually apply this intelligent design of the ability of humans to be creative to actually some business ideas. And, okay, uh, and I can talk about those, but I don't have time.
<laughs> so uh, intelligence and uh, the Turing test. One of the things that is very linked is artificial intelligence and intelligent design. Do you ever notice that intelligent is the root of both of those? And indeed, one is connected uh, to the other. Um, it, it turns out that Turing's idea, he wanted to actually generate a computer to show that humans weren't impossible. He was an atheist and he wanted to prove his atheism. Ironically, he showed and proved just the opposite, that it can't be a Turing machine. Rather, what has been proposed is the Lovelace test, which is a test based on creativity for the computer. And that's the new standard, and it'll never be met. Measuring creativity in biology, there's a couple of things which are interesting here. One is the idea of algorithmic specified complexity and how we can actually take some of the models, if we are able to take the computer science models, apply them to the biology models, and come up with a, a, uh, a successful fusion of those ideas. We will be able to measure the degree to which they are designed in bits. And then the other question which is asked, what about the creativity of life's um, uh, emergence? What about the creativity involved in there? I think that evidence is starting to mount that this indeed itself is probably non-algorithmic. That there is something above and beyond which is actually contributing to this. And uh, that concludes my talk. Oh, whoops. No, yeah. I, I spent a lot of time on this slide. <laughs> See, this is supposed to be going on while you're applauding. <laughs> okay, I'm finished. So.